A VAD is a mechanical heart that is surgically attached to the left ventricle. It pumps or assists the heart to pump blood to the body for left ventricular support. The VAD is, uh, consists of a pump unit which is usually made of titanium and it, it is implanted in the patient's or attached to the patient's heart and apart from that, it, it has two outflow cannula or tubes and also a drive line which carries the wires outside the body and attached to a battery unit and also a controller or a console. VAD is actually a mechanical pump uh, whereas the pacemaker is a device which uh, synchronizes or induces the contraction of the ventricle with, uh, to improve the efficacy of the ventricular contractility. Usually, patient who has an end-stage uh, heart failure with uh, optimal medical therapy. Actually, it depends on the indication. If it is a bridge to transplantation, it might be a short term uh, while waiting for an organ from a donor. So the patient will be on vet for probably uh, one or two years. However, there's a patient who needs the vet for life or we call it destination therapy. This patient is uh, either too old to be transplanted or there is a few contraindications that inhibits patient to be transplanted. So it will be a long-term device, probably more than five or six years. Our surgical mortality risk is about five to 10%. Apart from that, patient also has uh, other complications such as uh, bleeding, uh, thrombosis, infection, and rarely uh, pump or device failure. Yes, patient needs to take his uh, regular medication. Uh, for instance, if he's a diabetic, he has to take a diabetic medication. And apart from that medication, he has to take uh, anticoagulation to make the blood thin. Partly because uh, VAT usually supports one of the ventricles, whereas a MAC Totally, total artificial heart has uh, two pumps which uh, supports both of the ventricle. Heart transplant is still the best uh, treatment option for end stage heart failure because uh, VAT, as, we, as I said earlier, VAT has a uh, few complications. However, some of the patients which is contraindicated for heart transplant will be uh, on VAT uh, for the whole of his life. There's few things. One is medication, as I mentioned earlier. You have to take anticoagulation for life as long as you are on the bed device. And you have to do your own uh, self-dressing at the drive line. Lastly, you have to come for regular follow-ups. In our institution, so far the success rate is more than 80%. It's a very expensive uh, device. Usually it costs around uh, 350 to 450,000 ringgit. Okay, not every people need VAT uh, since uh, VAT is the last resort of the therapy line and if you have symptoms of heart failure, first you have to see a cardiologist and the cardiologist will conduct certain tests to confirm that your heart is uh, in failure and then uh, usually they will start some medication first or you will insert a pacemaker to synchronize your a ventricle and uh, lastly if all these measures uh, fail then probably they will refer the patient to us for consideration of vet implantation. ECMO is a form of extracorporeal life support which has uh, external circuit or external artificial circuit that carries uh, non-oxygenated blood from the patient to the oxygenator which enrich the blood with oxygen 
and, and circulate back the blood into the patient circulation in the absence of native lung and heart function. Usually ECMO will be stationed in ICU and uh, unless you want to transfer the patient from one hospital to one hospital, that, that can be arranged with certain types of ECMO machine. So it is uh, actually a surgical procedure, but it can also be performed by intensivists. Uh, actually, it's a procedure where you connect or you insert uh, two cannulas, one venous or one atrial, or sometimes a venous and venous, and connect it to the circuit. So ECMO circuit uh, consists of a pump, oxygenator, and also the software. VET actually is a long-term device and whereas ECMO is a short-term device. Sometimes ECMO is used in an emergency situation while waiting for a decision whether to proceed with VET or most of the time ECMO is used for recovery. That means uh, if the patient has a heart attack, we put an ECMO and we expect a recovery within two or three weeks. There's two indications for ECMO, one is for cardiac failure or heart failure and one is for respiratory failure. Uh, in case of cardiac failure, patient usually has a cardiogenic shock or acute myocarditis or post-myocardial infarct. And uh, in case of uh, ECMO for respiratory disorder or respiratory failure, for instance, patient who has conditions such as ARDS, uh, severe pneumonia, or severe pneumonitis where the lungs is unable to uh, diffuse oxygen and take out carbon dioxide from the body or although patient is on ventilator. Yes, there's a, also a special indication especially for post-cardiac surgery patient uh, not only in children or in adults but mainly in children they use it if the patient uh, has a congenital correction or major cardiac surgery and the heart need to be rested so they will put patient on ECMO for a while while, the, uh, while waiting for the heart to recover. Yes, the main risk is uh, bleeding from the cannula site but usually if we insert the cannula peripherally uh, the bleeding will be less. Usually the bleeding occurs after one or two weeks. But in case of uh, ECMO, usually we use a different type of anticoagulation, which is heparin. Usually VAT, we use uh, warfarin in the oral form, whereas heparin is usually on uh, intravenous form. 